is actually three poems. It's not one. It's one name for multiple states of a disorder. So what I'd like to do is show you the path that I took in, uh, with my group in developing treatments for this. And I'll start with a, a summary of the acute spinal cord injury field. So after an acute spinal cord injury or brain trauma, any insult to the brain, you've got a condition where your blood leaves the vessels and invades the tissue around it. So this thing that says lumen, that's a blood vessel coming out of the screen at you. And blood is usually traveling through there. But after a spinal cord injury, anywhere outside of that circle, you've got the blood cells there in blue, T cell migrating into the CNS, leaving that central nervous system. Now, there are active molecules that actually call that T cell out of the bloodstream and into the brain or into the spinal cord. They don't usually do that. They usually stay within their blood vessel. A colleague of mine, Tom Lane at UCI, was very instrumental in discovering one molecule that was actually responsible for calling a particular immune cell out of the blood vessels and into the site of the brain or spinal cord that's uh, damaged. He studied multiple sclerosis. And he discovered that this molecule called IP10, long scientific name, doesn't make any difference. IP10 was released by the site of the injury way outside of the blood vessels. And it called the bad guys of the immune system out of the blood vessels and into the spinal cord. This IP10 recruited only one single cell type, a single cell type that pulled the bad guy of the immune system out of the blood vessels and into the site of the trauma. So I was laying in bed one night, like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I thought, you know, I bet you it's the same mechanism that pulls blood cells out of the bloodstream and into an MS lesion as it is to a spinal cord. I always had this theory that a rose is a rose. The way that the brain or spinal cord degenerates is the same, regardless of the truth. If it's a spinal cord injury, if it's a stroke, a blown blood vessel, if it's a disease like multiple sclerosis, the trigger starts it, but what happens after there is the same. So if it's the same molecule, if it's one, mo if one molecule pulls the, the bad guy of the immune system, that destructive component that blows up bacteria or blows up tissue, causes an MS lesion, I bet you it's the same thing that happens in spinal cord injury. And we were right. In the top left-hand uh, corner there, you see a spinal cord laying on a black tabletop. We literally cut that spinal cord, waited 14 days, and then just took it out of a, a rat and a mouse and laid it on a black surface and photographed it. We made this injury with a 0 0.6 millimeter blade. It's like a razor blade, 0 0.6 millimeters. We cut halfway across the spinal cord down into it, it's called a hemi section, and severed half the spinal cord. But here you can see, 14 days later, it's not no longer 0 0.6 millimeter cut, is it? It's a huge divot. Massive amounts of spinal cord have been lost. We didn't cut that. That is secondary degeneration. That's what your own immune system does when it gets injured. Whether that injury be a stroke, multiple sclerosis, um, any kind of injury whatsoever, it's your immune system that's the problem. Most people are in wheelchairs because of the secondary degenerative response that can actually cause the site of the initial mechanical trauma to become four to five times larger. That's amazing. That gives us a therapeutic target. Forget about the original trauma. Let's just try to stop that secondary degenerative response. So what Tom Lane and I did in our, our teams was develop an antibody, a means of blocking that recruitment molecule, that IP10, that pulls the bad guy of the immune system out of the blood and to the site of the spinal cord injury, or an MS lesion, and um, it blocked it. The cool thing about this is that it leaves the immune cell intact in your brain and in your spinal cord all throughout your body. So if you've had an accident in the surf, if you've been dragged across the road in a car accident, you need your immune system. You are full of bacteria and you are trauma. You need your immune system. A broad spectrum immunosuppressant can cause a lot of trouble for you. We are not immunosuppressant. This is something like I consider as a Mach 2 immunosuppressant. You want to quiet down the immune system, but you still need it. You just don't want it in the site of the spinal cord injury. So by blocking this recruitment molecule, those CD4, TH1, T cells never get into the spinal cord injury. They're still moving around in the bloodstream, fully competent, but they just don't get into the site of the injury. They don't cause that enlargement. 
which is shown in the bottom two panels. In the bottom left, you can see a spinal cord injury that we took that animal, gave it a single injection of this antibody, this drug we developed, that stopped the immune response, and you can't even see the cut anymore. That's because the skin, the meninges over the spinal cord has healed. But if you look in the, uh, those purpley images on the right-hand side, in the bottom right, the 0 0.6 millimeter cut you can still see. You can still see that original damage. But look at all the tissue above and below it, and compare that with the panel above where we didn't give our drug. You have lost a lot more spinal cord by doing nothing. If we inject it within six hours, and a human within 12 hours, we can stop by about 70% that secondary degenerative cascade save 70% of the spinal cord tissue that otherwise would have been lost. 70% of the spinal cord tissue. It only takes five to 10% of your spinal cord to walk it. You can spare another 70% that you would have lost. That is tremendous. I estimate that we would drop in more than half the number of people in chairs if we could get this thing working in humans. This is what uh, it looks like. This animal is being videotaped underneath a glass tabletop. And what you're seeing, this animal's just simply been cut, simply a hemisection injury. And it can't lift its belly off the ground. Its legs are not coordinated front to back, it's sort of hopping and dragging its hind limbs around. But if we get in there with the same injury, the same injury, but we get in within six hours in a mouse with a single injection, this is something that a registered uh, nurse could, could give, paraplegic, anybody in the, size of, uh, the site of a uh, trauma. This is uh, what happens. Okay, look at this guy. Yeah, pro mouse. <laughs> Fully weight supporting. All four limbs are coordinated. This guy's lost 50% of his spinal cord. It's been cut. We haven't done anything to uh, repair that. But what we have is an animal who can walk tremendously better than a, uh, an animal who can't. The other one can't. This one can. It's just a, it's a phenomenal degree of recovery. And we, uh, we were very, very excited about this. So Tom Lane and I, um, we got really, really excited. And we started going to the government. We went to companies. And we, we said, look, we've made mice walk again. Um, you should let us try this in humans. And the, the field came back, and they said, the spinal cord injury field at 100% market penetration, meaning everybody we treat gets better, is only $300 million annual profit it's too small of a, of a group of people for large companies to make money off of. That's like 100% market penetration, and a blockbuster is about 20% market penetration. So we were educated. Wow, this was a real hit. So then what we did was we took this drug and increased the market size. We went with Tom's area of expertise, multiple sclerosis, and we showed that the same drug halted MS in three out of three of the pharma tested animal models. It's actually the only drug that has ever halted and reversed multiple sclerosis in all three of the three animal models of, uh, accepted by big pharmaceutical companies. That's good. What was even better was rheumatoid arthritis. Now I have to say that Tom and I knew nothing about rheumatoid arthritis, and, uh, but we learned how to make a rat paw arthritic in the bottom right. And um, it's a little